Hello and welcome to the big picture. So, the visit of Defense Secretary Leon Panetta to, the, to India as part of his nine day visit to the US, to, to, the, to Asia, sorry, has brought back into focus the strategic and diplomatic ties between the two countries. Panetta, who is on a tour to Asia, is also scheduled to visit China apart from other countries in the region. All eyes are now on how this visit will shape the future ties between the two countries, especially in the military and defense cooperation, while Afghanistan is very much on the agenda too. Of course, the U.S. Defense Secretary is also eager to see India make some big ticket purchases from the U.S. defense manufacturers, about which India has been cautious so far, though in the last 11 years, about $8.5 billion worth defense purchases has been made from the U.S. Meanwhile, the U.S. has already declared India as one of its most important strategic partner and thinks the two countries have common concerns when it comes to China as well as the threat from the Islamic ext extremists. Does India share the same view? How far is India willing to go on this strategic partnership? Are some of the questions being raised today? Today we are looking into all this and asking the question, where is the India-U.S. defense ties heading? To discuss this, I have with me today Major General Ashok Mehta, a defense analyst who is just back after listening to Leon Panetta, who delivered an address at the ITSA. And along with him is Anand Sahai, coordinating editor at the Asian Age. We'll be joined very soon by Mr. Lalit Man Singh and Commodore Uday Baskar. Welcome to my guests. Uh, let me go to uh, Major, Major General Mehta. Mehta, what, how was the, from the atmospherics in, in this talk at ITSA, you know, of Leon uh, Panetta, what is it that you could make out that he has come here looking for? No, I think um, for somebody like me, uh, who was in the United States attending uh, uh, training at Fort Leavenworth way back in 1975 when yes. India-U.S. relations well, were, were, were at its lowest. Yes. To listen to uh, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta paint a very optimistic picture of the current situation, the current state of relations, and how these current state of relations will blossom further um, was very impressive and uh, i would i would say what struck me was the candor with which he spoke uh, what struck me was uh, the fact that here was a relationship which had no meaning and that relationship has now moved to what we call a strategic partnership in which the defense relationship or the military to military relationship is the is, is a basic plank and as you mentioned in your introduction that this relationship is one at a bilateral level right and second it has to be placed in the context of the larger asia pacific region Absolutely. and i would say that at the bilateral level Again, if you only went back to 2004, in 2004, we signed an agreement uh, for the Hawk trainer aircraft with United Kingdom. Right. And do you know what we put as a special clause? We put a special clause in that uh, more than $2 billion uh, deal for, for trainer aircraft with UK that there will be no U.S. parts in this aircraft <laughs> until and 2004. Is, and this is as, as, as uh, you know, later as 2004. To, as to, until 2004, we had bought a, a dollars 180 million worth of equ equipment, 2004, once the, the, the weapon locating radar. And it took us... 14 years to get that weapon locating radar. Right. From 2004, and I would say 2005 onwards, really the last 10 years, we bought equipment worth more than $8 billion right. and high-tech equipment. Absolutely. I think I've got uh, Commodore Uday Baskar now uh, 
Uday Bhaskar, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, Girish, I can yeah. hear you. Hi. Uh, Uday Bhaskar, uh, Major General Ashok Mehta is just back after listening to uh, Leon Panata. I wonder whether you were also there. Anyway, he seems to be extremely impressed by yeah, the... Yeah, I was also there at the yes. same venue. Yeah, yeah. so he seems to be extremely impressed by the way Leon Panetta was addressing today the kind of issues which he has raised. He says, you know, the, with the distance that we have covered, the, the Indo-US relations, especially the, the defense ties, which is, which is uh, since 2004, is quite impressive. Do you also feel the same way? And, and the same question which I asked Major General Mehta, what is it that... Leon Panetta is looking for during this visit to India? Well, I would also, I think, reiterate this point that today, Secretary Panetta, when he spoke in New Delhi at the IDSA, yes. he was very forthcoming and he responded to all the questions in a very measured manner. Right. And I would agree with this suggestion that India-US relations have moved in a very significant and positive manner over right. the last seven years right. from 2005 onwards. Right. You already have some figures about what kind of trade volumes have been generated. Yes. But to me, Girish, the central point that I came away with from the lecture this evening was the candor and the commitment right. expressed by Secretary Panetta as far as enhancing India's own capability is concerned in the defense and military sector right. and the access to American high technology, which was not available to India till 2008 right. because of American legislation on the subject. So I think that's a very significant assertion but, and hopefully uh, India and the United States would be able to sustain uh, the uh, kind uh, of dialogue we uh, have. Uh, and uh, it's uh, also interesting, at least to me, that he mentioned that there are areas of difference. Right. So I think that should be noted. Uday uh, Bhaskar, you know, there are still concerns expressed about uh, India getting some of these dual-use technologies. Uh, was, was there any mention of that, these, these dual-use technologies, which are still, uh, as far as the DRDO is concerned, it's still not accessible to them? Well, while there was no specific reference to any particular technology, Mr. Panetta did respond to one of the questions asked by a media representative, the suggestion being that the United States was denying right. or reducing the quantum of certain high-tech equipment. Right. And he actually said, no, that's not true, that's not valid. Mm. And the United States is now actually encouraging their industry to engage with India. So my sense is that at the political level, they have given the green signal, but it is the bureaucracy right. on both sides, I think, which have to go through various procedures. So on balance, I would characterize this as saying that the political framework is enabling, right. and now we have to look and see how the two bureaucracies are able to okay. dot the I's and cross the T's. Okay, we, have, we, are, we are joined here by Mr. Lalit Man Singh. Lalit Man Singh is a former foreign secretary and also and Indian ambassador in the U.S., uh, Mr. Man Singh, welcome. Uh, you. you know this. Now he's talking about the bureaucracy. Sure. You know how how will the bureaucracy respond? One second thing is, you know, India, U.S. is looking at India as something you know providing some kind of a security, not just the, as they say, not just of Asia, but you know Afghanistan and beyond. What is it that uh, U.S. is looking at from India, and is India going to respond? In, in the manner in which U U.S. wants us to. Well, that was very clearly expressed by Mr. Panetta this afternoon. Right. That the U.S. Is, has reached a point of uh, revising its doctrines and its approach. Uh, they're facing serious financial cuts in their budget. Right. And yet, they need to maintain their global presence. So they're reviewing their defense posture. Mm. And part of the review is that they will strengthen regional powers so that they can work together. Right. So, in their view, India is one of the major regional powers, right. especially as their attention is now shifting from other areas to the Asia Pacific, right. which will be the venue Absolutely. of their activities hereafter. Yes. Uh, so, what they expect from India is to be on the same side on common interests and common values. And does India share, when it comes to common interests, when they talk of common interests, is there, is there in the Indian mind, in the Indian government's mind and the Indian diplomat's mind, the same kind of concerns which you as Well, you know, um, the Americans have begun to accept that India values its strategic autonomy. 
Right. Now, in some areas, we don't follow the Absolutely. American interests. Right. Like in Iraq, Absolutely. we made it clear that it wasn't in our interest right. to be involved in that. Right. And in, in, I, or let's say if there is a Iran, war... In, in, on Iran also, we are not... Really on Iran it. also, we have serious differences. If there's a war which will uh, break out in Taiwan, right. surely India will not want to be involved. Right. But in a broader perspective, so far as regional security is concerned, I think we have a lot of commonality. Okay. And these were also mentioned by Mr. Panetta when he talked about uh, the freedom of the maritime, the sea lanes, for instance, right. vital for both of us. He talked about the new areas, about space, about right. cyber security, which are also common areas for us. So uh, if you ask me, yes, we have a lot of, lot of common, common interests. Commonalities. And therefore, it is reinforcing the security on both sides. Okay. Anand, coming to you, you know, Afghanistan seems to be one of the major focus of uh, Leon Panetta in this visit. You have been in Afghanistan. You understand this well. Uh, do India and the U.S. have the same kind of thinking as far as Afghanistan is concerned in the, in the present context? See, I think there, <coughs> there will be lots of similarities. You know, uh, Identity, I, I do not know. We have U.S. Uh, wants India to play a more active role in Afghanistan, you know, even as far as military is concerned. Well, we also concerned. want to play an active role in Afghanistan. If we do so, it is not at the behest of the U.S. You know, right. It's also in our own interest. Hmm. And uh, uh, both countries are democracies. We are not a Western-style democracy fully, right. but we are a democracy. And that is, I think, on the whole, accepted all over the world by the U.S. and others. You know? Though I don't think uh, the Western world regards India as being a democracy of its own type. You know, <clears throat> There are differences there. And being democracies, we obviously have so many things uh, going for us if we act together. You know? Right. I mean, it's not only a matter of economy and trade, it's also a question of perspectives as the whole uh, story of uh, terrorism, fighting against terrorism Absolutely. worldwide uh, goes in the last few years. We have strong linkages. You were talking about technology a little while ago. We want a lot of technology from them, which, were, which we felt was being denied to us in the earlier period right. because of Cold War. Now, having said all of this, and I think the point about strategic autonomy was uh, made, I think this is a very valid point. I think they understand that now. They had rather hoped that the, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, you know, we would be uh, you know, more, more eager, let's say, you know, uh, to, uh, to get, on to, uh, get, get on board, if you like. But I think, uh, does India want to be an Eastern NATO, let's say? Absolutely. You know, I mean, or does it not? That's one question. Yes. Number two, does it serve India's purpose to be an Eastern NATO? You know? Absolutely. China yes, was yes. an Eastern NATO in the Cold War period. Right. Do we I want think, to I think Mr. Leitman Singh that, wants to. That's, that's I think Mr. Leitman Singh wants to. I want to jump in here because you raised Afghanistan. Ah. And it's interesting how the American uh, uh, approach to India has changed with regard to Afghanistan. Right. There was a time when they didn't want India to be involved Absolutely. very much. Yes. And they were very happy that we are confining ourselves to economic cooperation. Right. Today, America is pushing us, is urging us right. to be more active. And Secretary Panita said, we want you to do more of what you're doing. If you're providing training, provide more of it yes. with your facilities here. <laughs> so in a way, they're inviting us to right. areas which were out of bounds for us. Okay. And it's, it coincides because we have strategic interests in Afghanistan. Absolutely. We need to go into a short break now. Uh, we'll come back and continue this discussion with, with all these interesting guests I have today. Please keep watching. I'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the Indo-US defense ties and asking the question, where is it heading? Let me go to Commodore Uday Bhaskar. Uday Bhaskar, one of the things which, are, which is written about, which is discussed all the time in, in the present context of uh, US-India ties is how US is anxious to you know, prop up India as against China. You think this, this question keeps on cropping up all the time. You think, uh, you know, Leon, in, in Leon Panetta's 
talks with the Indian leaders. This is something which must have figured. And how do you think the Indian leaders would have responded to it? My sense is, yes, this is an issue that would have figured perhaps in the discussion that Mr. Paneta had with his Indian counterparts. But you know, Girish, is very interesting, this constant reference to China right. and the way in which the United States perceives China and India's own concerns about China, these came up in the course of the question and answer this evening okay. when Mr. Paneta was speaking to a small audience in New Delhi. Right. And he had what I thought was a very insightful response where he said, and mind you, he made the same point in Singapore when he was speaking on the Shangri-La Dialogue, that the United States seeks a cooperative relationship with China. At the same time, he emphasized, reiterated, that the United States also wants China and all the other players to abide by certain international norms and international legislation, as, for instance, the freedom at sea. Right. So you see a certain contour or a framework in which he is locating the US-China relationship. And if you look at what Indian political leaders are saying, or the Indian National Security Advisor when he has spoken on the subject, it is much the same, which is that we want to engage with China within a cooperative framework to the extent that India's own interests are not adversely affected or they are respected. So I thought that was actually a very insightful response. And this constant bogey, I would say, right. that China is to be seen as quote unquote the adversary right. and that India and America are ganging up yeah. is something that has been I think placed in a very very insightful context by Mr. Paneta this evening. Okay. So to that extent there is a correspondence in the okay. way in which the United States wants to deal with China and the way in which India wants to engage with China. Okay. Girish? Yeah. Um, yeah. General Mehta. Yeah, I think it's a tribute to Indian diplomacy that after the end of the Cold War, uh, we have the flexibility and the strategic autonomy to deal with all the countries, engage with all the countries. And uh, this is what we are demonstrating in the 21st century. Now, as far as China is concerned, I think the Americans have realized quite clearly that India is no push. And that whether it is Iran or China or wherever, India will do something which is in its national interest right. in consonance with the kind of values that he talked about. And this came out very clearly today in his, in his, in his uh, presentation about differences. He said, he said, we understand that India and the United States will not agree on everything. They will differ. And this was uh, illustrated by a question that was asked of him about the fact that in this very expansive and very promising defense relationship, India has still not signed three critical uh, uh, agreements, right. SISMOA, LSA. BECA, and LSA. And what he said was that, yes, we understand India's reservations and we are not pushing India. So we will continue with this relationship regardless of the differences, but there are more commonalities. And this comes out and, you know, on China. I think uh, it is very clear to me, the United States, I mean, George Bush said that we want to help India to become a, a, a world power yes. or a regional power. So what's wrong with that? We should take all the assistance that the Americans will provide us in terms of strategic okay. relations, defense. But when it comes to China, we engage China on our terms. Absolutely. Mr. Man Singh, the problem of the Indian uh, ruler, the Indian government, is that within the country there is always a certain amount of resistance to this kind of expansive relations with the U.S., especially when it comes to military ties and things like that. How do you think the Indian, Indian establishment will be able to balance these local domestic, uh, you know, pressures and the way the U.S. is, you know, as you said, wooing us? Well, you know, the reaction of the public is understandable mm. because for the first 50 years after independence, 
the Americans uh, were pretty hostile to us. Absolutely. So in the Cold War period, we were on different sides of the fence. Now, post Cold War, right. we find our interests coinciding and we are together. Not on everything, but we have a large measure of common areas. Now, mind you, uh, the governments have had differences, but the people have had their own approach. I mean, just, well, just think of where a young man would like to go well, for his higher studies. That of, has been the case in the last 50 years in exactly, this country. Exactly. So I don't think there is any hostility to the U.S. in our society. Right. In fact, our societies are much in common. But in our strategic interests, we've had differences. And now these differences have narrowed down and we are able to work together in a strategic partnership. I think it's a good development. This Panetta's visit, how far, you know, how far would, do you think he, he, he would have, he would have uh, pushed the case of defense procurement? Because that is one big, you know, but there is. India, India has not been very, you know, as we thought when the nuclear deal was on with, with, with you know, uh, we yeah, thought know, that India, you know, the, the, the critics of the government said that we are selling off ourselves, you know, we are going to be buying, but we are not done that actually. No, well, well, the Americans must also understand yes. that we are in a different position than in the Cold War period. Right. Those days, since we are under sanctions, uh, U.S. technology was denied to us. Yes. And we didn't have the cash. Right. We were short of foreign exchange. Today, we can say that we are able to afford the best technology that money can buy. And with we are in a buyer's market. We are in a buyer's market and the Americans were disappointed that we didn't buy the planes. Right. The answer is obvious. The planes were not good enough. <laughs> and therefore, now they are saying, we will give you the best technology. Right. Now what they are offering is state of the art. Mm. I wish they had done that before. They would Absolutely. have been and in this He squad. said quite clearly, Lalit, if you remember, that we want to move from a buyer-seller re relationship <laughs> to a collaborative relationship where defense production... Transfer and, of technology yeah, will take place. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's, that's finally, they have accepted that. Absolutely. That there will be co-development, co-production, right. uh, and complete transfer of technology, so, which was not you know, the case earlier. Anand, you know, this, is, this is a major development you know, when it comes to what these two, two people are uh, saying that you know, we have gone quite a distance now where th they are saying that we will give the best technology. So the critics of the... Uh, um, of America in India, do you think should would be satisfied with these developments? No, I don't think it's a. You see, whether we were great when we were great friends with the Russians, or you know we're trying to improve our friendship with the Americans, there's always a section of public opinion, those who were who mattered on the political stage, uh, which was a strong enough weight arguing the opposite side. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. that that's all right. But we do have to understand that America is the preeminent power in the world, no matter which way you look at things. Uh, technology, economy, military power, political power, you know. We have to have good relationship with them. Now, does that mean that we should completely dovetail our own policies into them? Obviously, that's obviously not going to happen. You know, we are both large countries with varying interests, and while their interests sweep across the globe, ours don't as yet, even though, I mean, it, perhaps it will 10 years hence when our comprehensive national power grows, you know. And then we will see how it goes. But uh, I, I, I think a lot of the discussion is, in a sense, artificial. It's media hype. Is it China versus U.S.? What does China expect of us? What does America expect of us? I mean, I think they are both uh, fairly, uh, you know, self-assured powers. And, and as uh, Major General Mehta said, you know, he uh, also tribute gave tribute to the Indian diplomats, uh, you know. For well, having diplomats all very well. I mean, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure our diplomats are, are May, fine. They're Mr. Good. Lalit, they're, Mr. They're, Mansi, they're I don't smart. think Anand Sahai is they're, as... They're, <laughs> they're, they're smart. What I mean is, it's, it's the political horse sense of the people, you know, the, and the, the, the broad sense a country has, which way it should go. I think if we, if we focus a little bit more on expanding our own national power in every field, economy, I mean, political power, get, get your political act together, get your science technology act together, then I think we can speak to the world you know, on terms which will be recognizable even as by e them as, as, as terms e of uh, okay. equality. Uh, let me go to Uday Bhaskar. Uh, Uday Bhaskar for the last time. See, in U.S. sees India as some kind of a link between the East and West Asia. Is this something which India should be very happy about? Well, I would say India can take satisfaction from the fact that if you look at the global response today, the rise of China causes a fair amount of anxiety in almost every major capital, right. particularly in Asia. 
whether you look at Japan, you look at Korea, you look at ASEAN and so on. Conversely, the rise of India is almost being encouraged, including by the United States. Right. So to that extent, again, Mr. Panetta made this point very clearly in his address that India is seen as a country, a force that can contribute to both regional security and what you might call as the larger collective good. Right. Now, that is a characteristic which should cause a lot of satisfaction. But I do want to add to the point that Anand made just now, yes. which is for India, the immediate priority and focus, I think, is domestic and internal. Absolutely. We have a lot of political dissonance. Right. We have a number of internal challenges. Right. And unless India is able to address that and bring it back to what I would call as some semblance of cohesion, right. we would find it very difficult to live up to the expectations that the rest of the world seems to have about the rise of India. Okay. I think, therefore, the challenge will still remain domestic and internal. And at the larger political level, even today in India, no politician is willing to stand up and say that a closer relationship with the United States would be in India's larger interest. Okay. I think that is part of the I think, I th opinion I th I think, that needs to be addressed. Right. I point. think, uh, Uday Bhaskar, I think you, pu you put the whole thing in a... In, in, the, in the right perspective, Raitman Singh, last words to you before we wind up. You well, know, do I you agree with uh, Uday Bhaskar that the challenge is actually internal, yeah, domestic? But I, I have a slight difference when people say this first and that later yeah. on. I don't think we have the luxury of having a sequence. We have to deal with problems as they are. Yes. And therefore, we have to deal with domestic problems and we have to deal with our foreign policy challenges okay. we at the need, same time. We, right. we need right. the United States as much as the United States needs, needs us. us. So this is a very convenient mutual arrangement which we must make maximum use of. Absolutely. So, you know, f from this discussion, it's evident that the ties, of course, are improving. There are a lot of things going to be happening. But as Commodore Uday Bhaskar, you know, suggested or should I say warned that the there are domestic compulsions which the Indian government needs to take care of before we can stand up and say that the relations between India and the U.S. has reached its peak. Anyway, thank you very much. Thanks to all my guests, Commodore Uday Bhaskar, Mr. Lalit Man Singh, uh, Major General Ashok Mehta and Anand Sahai. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture tomorrow.